Hello again, and welcome to Find Your Inner Flavor. I'm Becky Schoenig, and my co-host, Gregory Owens. We are the owners of Symbol, located in Kirkwood, Chesterfield, and St. Charles, Missouri. We have got, this is podcast number three. We record these three at a time on Sundays up here at the Gaslight, and we're in our episode number three. So we're already kind of in the flow of things. We'd like to say we saved the best for last, but really somebody canceled, so we (laughs) <laughs> we we no. saw this guy sitting out there in the bar. Hey, we said, come, come on, on in. Um, no, we wanted to invite Wes in on this conversation because Wes is one of our employees, but some of our employees have some of the most colorful stories. And Wes has kind of one of those unique stories. It started in Tijuana <laughs> with a bottle Did it? of tequila. Yeah. Is that how it started, Wes? Yeah. All good stories start All stories. in Tijuana. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently they do. <laughs> huh. No, but we didn't actually know everything about you when you came to work for us, except for we knew you had a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually know that until like kind of after the fact. I knew it because he said that. I, yeah, I, I I, I didn't mean, I think I sent you an email because after the transplant I had, uh, didn't want to go back to, definitely didn't want to go back to corporate restaurant. I was just burnt out and I didn't want to work 60 hours a week. And I wanted to gradually go back into it. My wife didn't want me working full time. And, I emailed you because symbol was what I really wanted to get back in the restaurant, being about food and fresh ingredients and uh, something not made in the commissary or just getting back to the basics, knife cutting and the stuff I really enjoyed and passionate about what got me into cooking in the first place. I remember getting your email and we were struggling finding somebody to go work in the Chesterfield location because of where it's at. I mean, you don't get a lot of... I, it was like perfect. I felt it was like perfect timing because I was... I was hel- I was healthier and I was ready to get out of the house cuz I had I had a part-time job when I was on dialysis but it wasn't, you know, not that I could have worked probably a full-time job I, with dialysis and everything you have to do but and yeah. you weren't sure what like you were like, yeah, I'm ready to come back to work. It's probably going to be part-time. Yeah, I just didn't know what cuz you hadn't worked in how long? Um I stopped probably a week before I went on dialysis, so I worked up until June of 2017 is when I stopped. I had okay. gotten, it was a week before surgery when they put in a PD catheter. So after, when I saw exactly what a PD catheter was and I was just decided, I was like, I'm not gonna work on, uh, uh, I'm not gonna work on in a salary kitchen anymore with the cord, like a, it's probably about 18 inches, I'd say that comes out of your peritoneal cavity and you have to, it's an open wound and I just, it's like I need something a little bit more uh, streamlined. So I, I got a part-time job at FYE, but that wasn't. It was. It was fun. It wasn't. It was definitely different from when I work in sixty hours a week. Yeah, it was probably just something to kind of keep your mind off. Oh yeah, and keep sit and busy chill, and... talk about movies and music all day, and get paid. It was great. <laughs> Kept my mind off of some things. You know, kind of look forward to going to work, not having to stress out about anything. It was very laid back and great. So let's backtrack. Um, Cause you've worked in the industry for how long? Mm, I mean, I started when I was 15 as a dishwasher. So I've been around for a long time. So you're institutionalized. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really all you, it's what you know. Yeah. Culinary school, no culinary school. Culinary school. I get, oh, uh, you, paid, you paid the big bucks. I didn't pay the big bucks. Uh, did my, did uh, freshman, my, uh, Freshman year of college and uh, senior year of high school at the same time, they had a program at Johnson and Wales. It was called, I forget what it was called, the Access Program. And he only had to take a couple extra courses, and so I knew in high school. We did pay the big bucks. Yeah, he's a Johnson and Wales boy. He's one of, he's one of them. <laughs> now it makes sense. Yeah, the, now prep, I, the, the Columbia, yeah. the turned up collar. Uh-huh. I got this at Goodwill for $8 <laughs> the other way. Oh, really? Greg, Greg got his jacket at Goodwill for yeah. what, $12? No, 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 this no, is no, no, no. This was no, $6, no. I think. The jackets, I think, are six fifty. dollars <laughs> Hey. Wow. I got, Two sugar in the raw packets stuck in the <laughs> as a bonus. They didn't so know about those. you came from the industry, mm-hmm. corporate and non-corporate, or all pretty much corporate? mostly corporate. I had a uh, little experience with some non-corporate, but um, mostly corporate. Um, I started off as a dishwasher, worked my way up to prep cook, and started um, like a broiler. And um, then I went to school. Uh, Got my associate degree in culinary arts and bachelor in food service management at Johnson & Wales. I loved living in Providence. That was a great time. Providence is a great town. It's full of college students. Okay, and all right, all right. It's not a commercial for Providence. <laughs> Come on. Right. I like it. Um, 
then uh, after living up there, the Northeast is just really, it's beautiful, but it's expensive. Uh, decided to move to the Midwest uh, probably about 14, almost 14 years ago. And uh, hmm? met my wife. Um, so, okay, so you had no, did you have family here? I did. My parents had gotten divorced and uh, I had visited the Midwest a lot when I was a child and um, I loved it because it's so laid back and it's That's a lot. so funny because yeah. so many people that live here go, how do I get out of here? Or no no way. why the fuck would you move here? No way. Not me. I was, there definitely is a Midwest. Growing up outside of New York City, you kind of appreciate the finer things in life and like, you know. You go through a toll booth in Chicago, it's totally different than the one in St. Louis, I mean, in New York City. So it's, uh, it's very more relaxed. People have more family values. Um, there's so much diversity here than there was in so Fairfield County, So you met your yeah. wife here? She, she did. I remember to this day where I first saw her, met her. I you do. Yeah, I do. Uh, oh, this sounds so romantical right now. Like, we had our first date at Ameristar Casino. Like oh, Shut right on. over a yeah, buffet. Yeah. Was this a buffet? Oh, no, it wasn't a buffet. We didn't go for the buffet. We went. We just went to have drinks, and I was like, I'll just play. I don't know how to be a gambler, but I do like people watching. I do like the slot. So we, she picked the machine. I put twenty dollars in. We won hundred. I won one hundred eighty bucks. So right there, you knew it. Was, she yeah. was lucky. Absolutely, she was lucky. Oh, right she there, she turned me down a bunch of times. Yeah. 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 Well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but so, uh, no, it's just, we took things slow. It was like one of the first relationships that I took really slow because I really liked her a lot. And it was the oh, first girl who I had met. Start crying. Uh, this is a romance story. We really right, had regardless. her own. We have a lot in common, like more so than probably most couples do. We both lost our mothers at a young age. We have both had to survive a lot on our own. Um and we both know each other very well, and the similarities are just. Um, well, and then, and then it gets crazy. Yeah, and then we were engaged for a while. Um, we got married in the, on a beach in Jamaica. Uh, we eloped, and oh it was God, a great. Are you trying to make everybody? I got like, I even seriously. Got, you even got engaged on bed? a gondola in Venice. Oh Jesus! Yeah. You know I. What you know what fuck? I love. You know what I this love. Shit. This is what I love. Yeah, one I'm a jackass. One. Oh. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, Greg, he set the bar. Gondola in Venice, <laughs> you know, wedding in all Jamaica. Right. With that being said, there was a good gift in return for all the prep work I did. <laughs> so we'll get to that. All right. There was. There I, wasn't just, just like prep I, work, just a prep work. <laughs> I love, I love Greg's like chef, chefy <laughs> bitterness a little bit. Yeah, God, show <laughs> off. I know. And Wes has gone through. Have you always been this? Like, cause you're kind of, you have this soft side. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I totally do. you have this soft side and this like nurturing and this compassion. Oh, yeah, yeah, so for sure. Have you always been like that or if has it been gay, more be so? Totally yeah, I think so. I think. Within, cause I'm wondering if Greg, if there's any hope for Greg. There's hope for Greg. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's hope for bitter. Greg. Bitter, now bitter, it's like, bitter, we went bitter. from you know freezing what, though, cold in here to like now sweating bullets. All right, I was hush. probably, bi I was probably bitter. Um, the last few years of my life, uh, dealing with a kidney disease and just you trying to handle all the curveballs in life. But then when you get a gift from something like my wife had given me, you get get a second chance on life and you get to totally appreciate the things you never appreciated in life. Being healthy every day now, or for the most part, healthy. And um, so, when did you yeah. find out about the kidney fl failure? What, like, how did 24. this all start transitioning? I was 24, and I was normally seeing a primary care physician. He'd asked me about cholesterol levels. I said, I have some history, and my grandparents had high cholesterol. And so he's like, Well, why don't we let's go ahead and do a test? He did a cholesterol test. My cholesterol came back extremely high, triglycerides and everything. So we started a medication, I, I think it was Lipitor, special diet, you know, restricted diet. Nothing seemed to help. Um, so I think he reached out to uh, Ann Goldberg, one of the doctors I've had for a long time since I've been here. She's um, a specialist in trying to find out your like GI and oh, I forget exactly what her tire. She has like a thousand patients. Um, she ran a special test, um, found the issues with the kidneys uh, specifically high protein in the urine, ordered a kidney biopsy probably three or four weeks later. I was on a flight from 
uh, I think Syracuse, New York, back to home, and I got the call, and they told me exactly what it was. It's called IgA nephropathy, and it's where your um, immune system attack your kidney function, which is can be offset from anything from a common cold to bronchitis, really anything. My wife knows a lot more about it. Right. Um, but when I got diagnosed at 24, my kidneys were already below 50 percent, both of them. So I figured we probably I probably um, had the disease since I was in my my teenager years for sure. And what were they saying? Probably you had how long? If they just didn't know, because it's a pretty rare uh, circumstance. They didn't know the direct. The, there's no book to say, okay, if you have this type of kidney disease, you're going to take this type of medication. It was all kind of like, well, studies have shown on this, this kind of works, and so it's kind of like not a guinea pig, but you know then put a lot of medication and you know your body just goes through so many changes taking a steroid a high dose of steroid for eight months like makes you just oh it was bad but um but when did you so when did you realize that it was going to come down to you needed a kidney transplant nothing was uh, going to probably work the first appointment after you know after getting the biopsy done and then after staying in the hospital and then after they do the biopsy they kind of figure out what your scar tissue your, what your um, kidney function is and they to figure out how long I mean we didn't really know sometimes they tell you it could last 15 years another time they could tell you 10 years so we just we didn't know at that point um, they didn't know a whole lot about how you know it's, it's extremely rare so they put you on prednisone um, and an anti-rejection drug I was on that I'm on now um, kind of slow slowed it down a little bit but I think it once it gets down to a certain point when you start down to getting kidney function at 20, it just gets worse and worse because it's like a car, say it's a six cylinder car and then it starts running on five cylinders and three cylinders to continue on the same speed. It's just gonna, so. So you go down the path and you know that I need, I'm gonna ha need a kidney transplant. What are the steps and how do you start going about getting you on really a list? You can't and do anything until you're under like 15%. Government standards, I think it's under 20%. So once you start hitting under, I mean, the doctor will start telling you this is what you need to start thinking about. You need to make a decision on what type of uh, dialysis you're going to go under, and you have to do a lot of research on that. And, you know, you weigh, weigh like, what kind of lifestyle you want to have because the dialysis is really going to steer you toward, am I going to do it three times a week at home? Am I going to go three or four times a week at a center? Am I going to go three, four times at a center overnight, or am I going to do it at home? So there's a lot to choose from. Um, and then you just, I mean, at that point, I probably uh, could have taken more positive approach on it, but it was just, it's... You it's, were pissed and bitter. No, I wasn't pissed. It wasn't, it's just, it's frustrating not having any family signs of kidney failure history whatsoever. So you kind of like, where did this come from? So then you start thinking about choices and non-GMO and talking about organic foods where you can and start really thinking about what you're putting into your body, whether, you know, from food to every, for everything. Um, my wife was probably more, uh, you know, towards talking about non-GMO and organic stuff before I was, but then when you get sick, you start thinking about things and what could have triggered this? What could I have done? But then it's like, what am I going to do going forward? So you have to mm -hmm. make a lot of decisions. And she wound up being your match so when you go in when you they the transplant office won't pretty much they won't talk to you unless you're at a certain stage in your dialysis when you so once you hit stage five that's renal failure you go into dialysis so once you go on on to dialysis um from day one you're already considered uh dis disabled then they start talking to you you have to interview for your kidney you have to talk to a financial planner so, i mean so you have to did you take your kidney to Venice? No. What do you well, mean? kind of. What do you mean? You, you, I mean, you have to talk to it. I mean, yeah. What do you have to do? You have to interview well, it. it didn't, like, is it no, a nice you, kidney? No. Is it like. No, when you are on the. Leave it to uh, Greg to. United Nations pull in organi the heartstrings. Uh, organ <laughs> Systems. It's called UNOS. Um, you have to interview for it. I mean, they're not going to give a kidney or an organ to someone who isn't following their dialysis steps, isn't taking their medication properly, has trouble with drugs, has problems with the police. I mean, these people, you have to interview for them. I know Barnes & Noble gets 1,200 um, 
recipients a year, and they they do about 350 transplants per year. So there's a lot of people not getting not getting them. Yeah, I mean, it, this is so and this sign, is kind of where your organ donor card. Let your family know. Yeah, give them up. I mean, my wife, uh, what she was able to do. I mean, even if she wasn't a match, I mean, there's so many programs where say if you heaven forbid one of your family members needs it and say you're not a match to that direct person, you might be a mo- another match for someone else in the state. Oh, wow. And they trade. So you go on like, and then oh. it bumps you up the list. So my wife was doing, even if we weren't, we were going to plan on that. She was going to swap it out. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's crazy. I mean, there's options. And then if you don't have a living donor, then you, there's three types of lists that you pick from of a kidney donor. Everyone wants list A, which would be perfect scenario, same age, same everything, but you're going to wait for a long time for something like that. Second one would be someone who's a lot older. The kidney might only last 10 or 12 years. The third one would be someone your age but is an, uh, a known drug habitual user. They test the kidney for everything they know about now, but in five years there might be a virus they didn't detect. That and you can be- only choose one of these options. Yes. Gosh, it's like... I think it's like we grabs. take for granted really we take for granted the like, stories that you hear, but you don't live the life of making. And now it's well, like all of these decisions you have to make and all things, of this as, research as you have to do. As intrusive as the government is, and as much bullshit as they put us through, why it's just not you're donating your organs? I mean, you don't get a choice. It's just you die. Your organs are yeah. I it's mean, amazing how many people don't, just don't do it. do it. Yeah, I mean, my I've wife's been, even uh, after she donated a kidney, she signed up to be a living tissue donor. So I mean, she's trying to do. I mean, it's just it's amazing to see. I mean, it's Barnes amazing. Is like a institution that I mean, you get there at five thirty in the morning. It's scheduled every Tuesday and Thursday of every week. They're doing scheduled transplants. I think it's amazing of how many things we could all actually do if we knew. I don't think a lot of people, I don't think these are the conversations that are taking place that people have any idea this, what this, some this of the options are that they can do. food sort of show, but we're talking about corpses and stuff. But it's we're cool. also, <laughs> no, but we're also it's talking, food, a, but right? we're also talking about, it's, yes, this is a food show, and yes, this is all this, but, but we're I mean, talking when about people. I was, when I was he- on dialysis, and I was, had an extremely, extremely restic- restricted diet. Symbol was one of the places. My wife knew about it. I, it was hot pot at the time. It was one of the places where I could get a meal, and I didn't have to cheat on anything, and it was flavorful, and I was full afterwards. You're kind of like our Jared without the pedophilia. Th- th- oh. Thank you so much for that comparison. <laughs> Gregory. Thank you so much. I'll find one for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it I'll might have something to do with this yeah. costume from last night. Oh, yeah. um, so you, so she winds up becoming the... An awesome match. So you get six, yeah, I forget, it's a... Tr- you get three blood type, three something blood things from your, from your father and three from your mother. So a perfect match would be an identical twin, which is extremely rare. It would be well, six out of six. It would be really rare if you don't have an identical well, twin. <laughs> but that would be a great match. She had two out of six, which is almost on her. It's real, between a three and a six isn't that much of a difference. Um, so she was a great match. She had to go through a rigorous. I mean, they put you through testing, too. They, they make sure all your organs are perfect. You don't have any STDs, uh, cancer. I mean, they, if they're going to put a kidney in you, they want to make sure your body can handle it. Sure. So she had to go through rigorous training as much as I did. Um, once, you cla- once you're done and cleared, everything's good to go. I mean, you just pick a date. And she picks the date because she, she got to pick what type of surgery they want. Now they do a new orthoscopic surgery where they actually take it out through, like, the. she only has probably an incision about this big by her belly button, and it's that big. They used to take it out from the back, and they saw off one of your ribs. Oh. Or yeah. shave, shave one of your ribs. But now it's all done with cameras and... Um, I remember like it's yesterday. We're up at like five thirty. Get there at five thirty in the morning. She went first. I think she went in at like nine. This is. That's I'm just gonna say like this is like a little bit of a. I sit there and I go, okay. I have the. You know, if I'm you, I've got the kidney failure. But now my wife is going under under surgery, and what if there's a complication there? I like the you're like this is a huge. Um. My wife is capable of doing 
pretty much everything. I mean, she's a, an amazing person, and if there is, <laughs> he needs another <laughs> beer. <laughs> you can hear <laughs> it's <laughs> empty. You're making a, it's. I don't make this stuff up. I mean, I deserve a good wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I knew like anybody was going to get through it, nicer. it was going to be her. I'm talking to him, not yeah, you. I like know. I'm like going, really? Let's be nice. Um, I wasn't worried about that. I mean, we had such positivity going in, into it, a lot of support and uh, family and friends. And uh, Barnes is just, I mean, they have it down. I mean, you talk about one of the top institutions for transplants in the country. So lucky. I mean, all the team, Dr. Shinoy, who actually did the transplant. Talk about a surgeon who uh, most surgeons can be a little scary and their bedside yeah. manner is I was going to say sterile, very sterile. St thank you. That's like the perfect word for it. But his bedside manner was great. He's like, you just need to sign the sheet. So saying that I'm going to save your life. And if I don't, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> but it's basically, you know, um, it's but the, he had a sense of humor yeah. about it. And uh, the team was just amazing. Like I wasn't allowed to go to her, um, her uh, updates and scheduled appointments because there's a conflict of interest, right. especially, you know, so it's very serious, um, but I mean, you roll in, she goes in at, she went in a little bit before me. I probably went in like maybe an hour and a half after her. I mean, they give you a pill, you go in and you're out. I woke up hours later and they like woke me up and I already had a bag full of urine that I was already making. Because when you go on dialysis, depending how long you are, you stop making urine. And that's what the peritoneal dialysis is all about. It's about removing excess water from your body. That's what your kidney stop doing so you don't you know it's it's dialysis is another podcast altogether but sure sure so you guys journey through this together you have no kids no kids um married for how long uh, were you married for before no we were engaged for let's see we'll be together 13 years this april we've been married for seven um so we've been together for a while a um you go through this you both survive. Mm -hmm. Does life change afterward? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just, you live with something for so long, you don't know what healthy feels like. And then when it finally kicks in, you're just, uh, I mean, I can work a long day now, and it's like nothing. Before, I would, I'd have to sit down for 20 minutes and take a break before I was working. Now it's just like... It's so easy, and you just appreciate you end up appreciating the smaller things in life. And um, you know, we've decided to have children. That was up in the air for a long time because you know, it can't. You be don't really, like kids. No, one. it's not. <laughs> you, I've grown you, to like kids. You don't you like kids. Mine for a while, and just don't like irresponsible. I think I've learned it's not the kids; it's the irresponsible parents that are out there. Um, Right. But no, I didn't know where the kidney disease was going to take us. And now that um, we've put that behind us, I won't have to worry any for anything for at least another 20 years. You know, it's a, we had a, a good kidney. I actually got pictures to see it, too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um, but now you know, I spent some time with my best friend in, up in New York and um, spending time with him and seeing what I was missing, going to baseball games and enjoying – the New York State Fair with kids and stuff like that, you know, I was like, oh, I really am missing out. And he's a good father. And uh, I really enjoyed seeing that. And I think my wife and I would make really good parents. So we, we in the next couple of years, she got accepted to Goldfarb, uh, which is a nursing school at Barnes. And she was really fascinated with everything with dialysis. So she wants to be a nurse now. So she's taking all her prerequisites and studying extremely hard and taking those to get them out of the way. And I think she's going to run with this. She's like so excited. And, That's awesome. Because she got her degree in art history and St. Louis's art scene is, yeah. let's just say you have to have a PhD to be someone's assistant. And so, yeah. but she's still a docent at SLAM at St. Louis Art Museum, which she likes to give public tours and she's still part of that. So it's very good. So let's round circle this because one, one you're an employee of ours, yes. but you have just this interesting and this unique story behind you. And that's why we wanted to, to bring you on and kind of talk about it. One, I think it's important people understand what this is and maybe there are ways for them to help. But then it's also a, once you go through all this, life goes back to normal. You have bills it to really pay. It really does. You have bills to pay. You have a life to live. Um, how you choose to do it differently or whatever it is. But you chose to come back into the in industry. Did. 
I did. Um, well, like I said, I was familiar with what Hot Pot was, and um, I, I couldn't go back to the corporate scene. I just I didn't want to work somewhere where I wasn't going to continue to learn anything. I'm still young. I have a lot to learn about the industry, and I like to I like to learn new things every day. And uh, coming to Symbol was probably one of the best decisions I've made since the transplant. And uh, I enjoy learning things from Greg and Becky. And um, are you what? gonna did Greg? No, Greg. It's, <laughs> you don't understand. Like, Matt's shocked. <laughs> I wish there was a camera on me. No, I'm good. And another beer. I <laughs> might need another beer. I <laughs> might need another beer. I'm asking you to walk through. I might need another beer. You're good. Grab me a beer, too, while you're It doesn't. <laughs> what, what, I'll what do you the guys same like? thing. A citywide pills? Yeah. All right. I'll be right back. Because, I mean, I think that that's one of the, we're t- We struggle. Greg and I, as business owners and creating Symbol, we struggle as to how to share and tell our story because we don't like putting our egos out there, I guess you can say. We don't like um, talking about ourselves necessarily. You don't kiss ass. Yeah, we don't like Either kissing do ass. Yeah, we don't like I the I think kiss your ass. performance should justify um, itself. I, I mean, I'm not really crying, but it is. I mean, it's, it's no different than seeing um emily who you never knew was a young employee oh yeah didn't cook for had never cooked was self-taught would like religiously self-teach herself and but she was uh, horrible interview oh my horrible. god horrible she had very absolutely terrible yeah she, she has uh, well high anxiety she, she had, had high anxiety, anxiety issues i mean this was her don't touch me yeah you know, it's like how the fuck are you gonna work somewhere where you you can't stand someone being a foot next to you I mean, how are you going to do that? But at the time, we had nothing to lose because we needed somebody. So we're like, let's just bring and her on. She's a and fucking rock she star. She was a rock star. Mm-hmm. Like, she was very intuitive. Just, she just she got, got it. stuff. I it mean, was like, you, yeah. you, she just got it from little training and she started home studying and yeah. doing all this she, stuff. I would say something to her. She had no fucking clue. So she would go home and look it up. Yeah. I'd say, you need to do this, but it's kind of like this, this, or this, and she would just go and look it up. But so was, I never really n- knew that she didn't know hmm. because she hit it, and then she would just go and find out. But she was a great story and an example because we... Um, she outgrew us. She outgrew us, and we knew she was outgrowing yeah. us because she just didn't seem happy. There was some struggles going on, and we finally sat down and said, okay, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to do? And she's like, I, I want more experience. I want more. I want to go into more fine dining. And we reached out to Olive and Oak that had just opened up in Webster Groves. We knew them and knew that they were hiring. And we we reached out to them and said, we've got this we got young. We've got somebody for we've you. We've got somebody. We think she's got skills. And would you be interested? They pulled her in for an interview, hired her, and she's still there. And I think I, she loves it I right now. I can't. I, yeah, and I don't know, but I can't but imagine she's got to be a rock star for him. Oh. I would, I would sh- I'd be I'm shocked if yeah. she wasn't. Yeah. She, she probably won't put herself out there enough to get the progression that she needs. Right. And hopefully they're seeing that in her. But, but, the, but, but then a, you're, yeah. That's I mean, and the stories that, well, the, you were incorporated. It's a fucking shit mess. Corporates are destroying America. I mean, you look at all the corporate restaurants can't survive now without giving away half a meal, or yeah, it's just and still and still the food quality's empl- gone down. Still it's, treating employees like crap too. Oh, it, it's like the CEO everything brings is, home a billion dollars a year, but they can't pay you know pay their empo- employees properly. But you know, symbol is something that's completely opposite of that. I think you guys are doing something that no one else is doing, and. Uh, it's not like you're trying to be someone who you're not, which I've worked with a lot of people who are just fake and just there to collect mm. a paycheck. You guys put your sweat, your blood, and your tears into a business, and that's what it takes these days to kind of, unless you're a corporate, unless you have a, a huge bank account yeah, and just willing to... Equity fund behind Yeah, that. unless you're a trust fund with a Although restaurant. if there is can, anyone with an equity <laughs> fund out there, we would <laughs> gladly... We'd be happy to yeah. take Except some donations in all forms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Oh, oh and this this you. is this is podcast yeah. material here. Producer yeah. Goes <laughs> oh my god. I feel like a I, this was like a celebrity moment. No, for a it, quick but it is it is very enriching and rewarding or whatever to know that you know someone like you not only were able to. I, it, I, I love the fact that you wanted to come work for us. That's amazing. Um, but it's almost that you were able to come eat what we do. Oh, well, I wouldn't. We, well, but that's, I mean, that's such a huge part of, of what we are. And the whole, your friends and family eat together. It, it is amazing to me still how difficult it is for chefs or businesses and this is not like being modest or whatever but what we do isn't difficult no it's not it's a lot like we're trying to recreate the wheel or do anything that but it's but it's like that's difficult just simple simple changes and you can just totally open yourself up to this huge on Everyone, market. yeah. Okay. I mean, but I also th- I love one of the things that I love is when we find these key employees like yourself, um, like so many of the other ones. They care so much about the business that when somebody comes in, when we hire somebody, who intuitively you start picking up on, going, yeah, this is not this is not the right fit. You guys voice it. Yeah. You know, like, you guys. It's a, fam- it's a family. And it's like either you're part of the family and drinking the Kool Aid or you're not. Oh, wow. Well, we Jonestown? Really? I drink the Kool Aid on day one, I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, well, it can be Kool Aid because technically they used Flavor Aid. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't actually, it was like generic. But we were, y- you. You were kind of taking a risk, saying, "Okay, I want to put myself back out there. I'm ready I to. I, I'm My ready wife to." Was like, um, she didn't want me going back in the restaurant industry. So at where all. is she at now? Like, what is she, what's her vibe and her take? You, you, oh, she loves that I'm happy. Like, it's been a long time where I can come home and not like want to have a few cocktails just to relax and have a decent well, conversation. You've had a couple hams. At, uh, <laughs> that's not. Well, but anyway, it's it's different coming home. It's like, well, how can I make tomorrow at work better? It's it's totally different aspect on on going to work. It's just like, how am I going to get through tomorrow? You know, previously versus how am I going to make tomorrow? How am I going to make work to better tomorrow? And it's and I you know I I enjoy doing everything that I do for Symbol. It's nice to work with real ingredients. It's it's a, the only though, struggle I have those is little working itty with bitty peppers. All the new ingredients I've never used before, <laughs> trying to make gluten free. Uh, you know, well, yeah, it's, it's a it's a yeah. It's a challenge for me, but it's interesting because it's something I've never done before, and you only get better by doing it. I I can't just read, so I have to physically do something to learn. You're a kinetic learner. Yeah, for yeah, sure. There you go. Well, I think a lot of people that go In into this industry, industry that totally. is kind of what you. That's how it like is. The video, yeah. pot, the video on how to do it, and then doing it yourself, I think is the best way I've learned in. in uh, Working for corporate is like the best way to visually teach someone. And that's what we're trying, yeah. And then you have to do it there with them and get them touching the food. And that's the best way they're going to, I've always felt. Yeah. Whether people want to invest in that time to train their employees right is where corporate can always. Well, but you know how it is. It's hard because you. Oh, uh, time and scheduling, but. That'll be a whole nother podcast is just how expensive it is to get an employee. Oh, yeah. It's like, well, it's. I mean, I, I, we loved like the young kids, but you know, colleges the way college schedules are now, it's like you're gonna be here for two months. Yeah. It's like how can I even? I can't afford to employ you because. Yeah. Right. But by the time you're even remotely trained, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand dollars at least, twelve hundred dollars uh, to train. Yeah, and that, then and you know, then we're then let's not even go increase the minimum wage, but whatever. So if you could identify three key employ. Three key components of what symbol is, or how we are different compared to the industry as a whole. What would you say? Well, it's different because your main source is not money, which would be on the top of every corporate restaurants. Like, obviously, you want to make money, but oh, it's yeah, not. Figure out well, how yeah, to obviously, you want to make money. Of what in we're the industry, right? But you don't make 
you don't make <laughs> stupid decisions to shortchange the guest or sacrifice oh. your brand, yeah. which is what most corporate companies do now with heavy discounting or cutting cutting corners on stupid things. Well, well like we had earlier, chicken, you know. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah, Fuck, we could. Smoke food tofu. Oh, yeah. Mo, just yeah. Even. Oh, my God. I mean, that's one that you could just easily. But okay. I think I think family is the most important. Family is for sure. I feel like it's a family here. Um, Even though you're losing three and a half hours on Tuesday. I like my hours. I need a new TV set. I know. We oh, said we're closing over. early on on yeah. Halloween. So all, yeah, this is going <laughs> to be West out. Coast, you mean I'm getting cut 3.5 hours that <laughs> night? <laughs> yeah, all you people that aren't here, you're welcome. Trick or treat. <laughs> we, yeah, but Let's I don't have play. kids yet. Westford well, flies back, trick or treat. I'm losing 3.5 hours. <laughs> but that is an example. It's like, okay, where do you bounce? Because there's so many restaurants. Oh, that will for be sure. And they're all going to be slow as piss. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. Halloween. What's number three? Um, for sure, I think it's uh, the freshness of the concept, using fresh ingredients, sourcing out the best possible can. I mean, and you do it well with. Um, balancing act. I mean, like you said before, you could source out organic every almost that. I mean, not everything, but you could source out organic fruit and use it for a smoothies. But it's going to cost you an arm and a leg, and so it's it's um, the balance. It really is. Um, I think too is the edu- well, not the he- but educating the customer when they come in is like a. F- some people walk in, they just don't know, and you have to educate a lot of people on food nowadays. Yeah, because yeah. they're used to. Corporate. I mean, it's in a box. Yeah, everything's yeah. in a box, and it's convenience, and it's just not food, real food anymore. So, yeah. find your inner flavor is. I would like to wrap up by just simply saying that find your inner flavor is actually about getting to the realness in life. It's getting to the realness in food. The inner, the flavor. inner flavor. You know, the fact that we are human, that our employees needed to be, need to be treated like that, not like they are you know, robots or that they're just a commodity there for yeah, you us. just get to, uh, you hire, sometimes it's better to hire for personality. You can we always do. Teach we always to, say. I always teach someone how to make a smoothie or a fresh juice. Yeah, yeah I don't per, give a you shit. We hire, we hire. Personality. Yeah. You really can't, and you can't teach a genuine, like you can't teach someone to be genuine. Either they're genuine or they're not. We say it all the time. I When, when I start getting to hear some of the juicy, dirty stuff that you've, fucked that's up in your life like. that's when I that's when I learned to like you that's when I learned to trust you and know. that's when you, yeah yeah I don't want I don't want I don't want you to come across as if you're perfect and you're unclean we, I mean we, we, squeaky we, clean yeah, yeah it doesn't work for me perfect we all should not have, be in the dictionary no is no, no. Blem- no blemishes make I us... like the blemishes and that's the kind of food that we use because well, it's like the local fruit we get the yeah. apples aren't perfect in size the peppers are definitely not perfect you, you, in size and that's what it's sh- the way it should be you might be out of local peppers <laughs> that's all right because the little itty bitty ones you I like saw them. Scott, yeah I okay saw so them. you two can say yes you're growing peppers you know peppers in my loft that's awesome. Well, well let, the let's hell? do a video yes. of you going in out the there loft. picking them, bringing them on in, and let's make something. It's like a window thing. Like, it's literally. Uh, oh, no, we need. Floor, like. Let's have fun. All right, we'll talk. Yeah. Producer guy interjecting. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. hey, I love it. That's okay. how local it gets. <laughs> so let's go ahead and wrap this up. We want to thank the Gaslight for creating such a great space for us to come and be creative in. Yeah, Mark's doing our sound. Mark is doing our sound. Matt with and Media made Outlaws. it warmer in here. Yeah, yeah, kudos to the yeah. being able to press the right buttons. Matt with Media Outlaws. Wes, our employee. We've got some other ones out there. Um, Com Blue for taking a risk and saying, hey, I want to be a part of creating this podcast and well, saying we'll sponsor. And just for doing what she does, yeah. sourcing how she sources. We just, yeah, yeah, I think, you know what? High five to all of us because I feel We're like we just kudos. Na- We're nailed. Good. Yeah, we nailed go today. Yeah. We nailed today. So thank you. Join us again on Find Your Inner Flavor. Share us, like us, comment, tell us what it is that you want to hear us talking about. Send and nudes, whatever. No. That's good. New noodles, noodles. Okay, Whatever. thank you. <laughs>